Champagne, just uh, tell us about the, the journey to, to get here, about how did this all go down with Coach P? Uh, I mean, the, the, the journey was as simple as last week. I was just, you know, doing what most people would say, being great where my feet are. I was recruiting for University of Toledo in Miami, and I was, you know, just working at that and trying to get some some good players. And uh, I got got a call from Coach B and and asked me what I what I want to come up. And uh, I told him I, I would love to, but I I, I got to continuously finish doing what I'm doing here and doing a great job here. And that may be one of the things that may have drew him to me. I'm a guy that you know believes in. Uh, uh, you know, character over image. I'm a guy that believes in, you know, doing things the right way. And I told Jason Candle I was going out to Miami to go and recruit some good players for him. So uh, Coach Bielema, you know, understood that. And uh, the coach that he is, he's probably been in that spot before. Um, and, and so um, we end up coming up and, and having some conversations with uh, with the defensive staff and, and really just uh, building into an understanding of who I am as a man and uh, obviously who I am as a uh, as a coach. And um, if, if I'm willing to come in and be able to help out a little bit in some of the key areas uh, in defensive backfield that I think makes this place uh, really special. What sold you on this opportunity as opposed to waiting or you know, taking a different one? Oh, uh, well, uh, Coach Bielema, obviously, uh, you know, and, and the fact that he has, you know, had success at building uh, head coaches uh, and, and building coaches, you know, and, and now you got Coach Walters at, at, at Purdue and, and what he's able to uh, bring to the table as far as in this program alone. Uh, the type of success that these guys are building upon um, is, is something that draws me in. It's something that creates a little bit of interest for me to say, hey, this is, could be a good challenge. And to be along with uh, Coach Jamo, uh, right, to be a, 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 along with uh, these guys on, on this staff, this great defensive staff, it's an honor for me to work under a guy like Coach Aaron Henry and see you know, what makes uh, things work for him as a defensive back coach has been uh, successful to uh, so many other places. So all the great things align in addition to, it's the Big Ten. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a great level of college football uh, that I grew up in, I grew up around, um, you know, watching TV every single uh, Saturday morning and, and, and trying to, you know, learn about, you know, different great players that play at this level. So uh, definitely that drew me in as well. It's the top challenge in our Midwest. If you're from the Midwest, you want to coach and you want to be a part of Big Ten football. Coach, is a big type of time of year for recruiting. Have you been able to jump right in and start talking to kids? Oh yeah, yeah. As, as, as soon as I took the job, it was it was right now. Uh, communicate with all the top guys in the Detroit, Michigan area where I'm from, so they knew, you know, hey, Coach Parker's on the move, and I'm gonna try and find a way to get some of you guys along with the guys that I've built relationship with in South Florida, along with the guys. I, you know, I'm I'm a crazy old coach that really believes in old school ways. I was the the president of National Single Wing Coach Association, and th that group just goes all the way around the country. Dudes that played in leather helmets back in the day. These guys are all around the country, so they give me access to to talking to you know kids and coaches around the country that creates a wide variety of recruiting platforms that I can go into and really build those relationships with uh, coaches and players that play in the same system that I believed in as a high school coach in that single wing, that old school version of football, because I'm a defensive guy. That was my gimmick. That was my trick to help me win some games and be successful. It was a way to make the program that I was coaching in be successful. So I got to find personnel that fits. Right, and that's what this is all about: finding personnel that fits, uh, fighting Illini football, fight, you know, to find a way that fits uh, what we do on defense. So, yeah, I, I got right on on the ground, moving, communicating with guys that I believe fit who we are, what we're looking for: tough, smart, and dependable. You know, you you, you got to have that that particular creed when you're looking for those type of guys. So, for me, I knew exactly the doors to start knocking on, and and and, and text messages to put out. So, yeah, it's been pretty exciting getting on the recruiting road so far. Um, spending time in Detroit was my first. Time and then I get to uh, spend some time with uh, with some coaches next week, this week rather, um, here in, in, in Miami, Florida, in the Florida area. Are those two states where you have most of your experience, Mich Michigan and, and South Florida? Are there some other places where you've been? Michigan, or? South Florida, the Ohio area, obviously coaching at Toledo. Uh, you know, you have an opportunity to meet coaches all throughout Ohio and things like that. And, and so those would be, you know, the, the areas that I believe I'll have some success in. But I've been in New Jersey and had to recruit that area before. I've been, you know, in, in different places to, to create relationships. And that's what recruiting is all about, really, really, right? Relationships. The type of relationship you have with a guy gives you an opportunity to really connect with him and make him want to say, hey, I want to send one of my players to play for you, right? Because that's what it's about. And so that's what I want to make sure I'm always trying to present for fighting line up football. Coach, how much do you know about this place, you know, the history of the program, 
for this community. How much did you know about this before coming here? Didn't know much about the community that, that surrounds it. Not not much about Champagne. I have some old teammates that I played with, um, you know, that's from the, uh, uh, you know, Illinois area. Mike Romelli played with me at Eastern Michigan. He was a high school coach here at Plainfield East High School. And so I've got some relationships, some guys that's going to tap into me and really help me build relationships around the community. Uh, but most of all, I know about fighting the line of football. I know about Juice Williams. I know about Dick Buckus. I know about great football players. Like I said, I grew up in Big Ten country, so I know what this place uh, really has had as far as the type of players. I know, you know, the story, Ron Zooks and guys like that that has been here. And ultimately, you know, I know I know the man that I'm working for. I know about Brett Bielema. So uh, excited to be here and just learn more about the community and try and tap into uh, any way that I can help and help continuously serve it. And Illinois come into your school over the years to recruit. And that happened a lot. Yeah, yeah. Any Coach coaches? Coach Jamison has okay. been inside of my school okay. at at River Rouge to recruit uh, my guys and obviously uh, talked to Coach uh, Bielema before about one of my defensive tackles that's now in the NFL and so uh, we, I've had some relationship with these guys but I can't say we were the, the best of friends. It's not ha ha he he it's really just a respected level of, hey this is Coach Bielema, this is Coach Jamison, uh, this is all of these different coaches that they have on his staff that are really really good men and like I said I'm, I'm drawn to those type of people. Of course statistically it was clear that at Toledo the last few years you guys were the least penalized one of the least penalized team in the nation, especially when you were a defensive backfield. That was the opposite of last year here in Illinois. How do you, in a layman's terms, go about kind of coaching that type of discipline once you get here? Uh, I think discipline uh, comes from, you know, a certain language of love. Like the kids got to know that you care about them as people and that you're talking uh, and experiencing things with them. So if they get a penalty, I get a penalty too. So that was, that was my fault for not doing a, the best job of preparing you. So I'm a thumb pointer, I'm not a finger pointer, right? And that's that's the first part. So they know I'm doing this with you, I'm going through this battle with you. The, the rules of college football and football itself are very, very tough for defensive backs to live in. So let me teach you from guys that are living in an even tougher world in the NFL. So I have different mentors that are in the NFL that are defensive backs coaches that were at some point college coaches and they came inside of my building to recruit my players. So with that, those guys came and asked me questions. Hey, Corey, how are you teaching this type of technique? How are you teaching that type of technique? Well, it's all the reciprocity in that relationship because now those guys are now ready to pour into me and, and give me, hey, this is some of the things that we do at practice that you may want to try. So we, uh, we, we really do a great attempt of not touching guys after five yards because that's a real thing in the NFL. That is a penalty. Well, in this particular league, you can do it, but why would I allow you to do it if we can find a way to play great with our eyes and great with our feet and be in great positioning to set up an overthrow or even create a PBU? So it really comes down to, you know, having some discipline at what you're doing, but how you're doing it. We'll put on oven mitts at practice, boxing gloves at practice. I got nothing to grab, got nothing to hold because my hands are clasped in a, a closed surface. So those are some of the things that I've did in the past. I can't guarantee it's going to work. There's no secret sauce, but you just got to work in it. You got to believe at it. And most of all, you got to be able to communicate with your players with a level of love language that they want to do it for you because they're doing it with you. So that's that's my outlook on how we were not penalized over the past couple of years so far um, at Toledo. Long time in high school, yeah. uh, you made that jump to Toledo, and now you're power two, I guess power four. This is like, how would you describe your journey from there, and why was it the right time to make that leap when you did in Toledo, and obviously now? Well, that was hard. Uh, it was hard when I left my high school players, right? Because uh, I, like I said, I used that that love language word, and in this game, in this field of football sometimes it's just thrown around well no I actually I have like lifelong relationships with these kids I tell them one day when I'm pushing daisies in my casket you remember something that coach tried to teach you something that coach tried to give to you that has nothing to do with football so for me it was hard for me to leave uh, River Rouge just as much as it was hard for me to leave Toledo uh, just now and so I had I caught every single player right I talked to every single guy those were some heartfelt conversations but most of all those guys were proud of me and they were happy for me give me goosebumps right now thinking about it, you know because it was the same thing at River Roots those guys felt like passion about like my success because they you know I sacrificed so much to see them grow giving them so much so that's ultimately who I am as a man I give everything everybody I every, every everything I have I give it every single rep every single down so I don't have it anymore you know so um it was tough um I can't say it was the right uh the right place or the right time because you just don't know how that particularly works. When the call came, I just did the best I could at that particular rep. 
but I had to also uh, show Coach Bielema that I'm a man of loyalty first. So I let him know, hey, I, I, I do want to have a conversation with Coach Jason Candle because I care about him as a person. He took a shot on me as a high school coach and gave me a chance to come to Division One football. So let me have a conversation with him. And then I went to go have a conversation with Vince Karras, our defensive coordinator. Then I went to go have a conversation with the safety coach, Ross Watson, to let them know who I am and what I'm about. Like, And, and I'm going to miss you guys, but I have to take this opportunity. And guess what they said? Coach, you got to take this opportunity. You're ready for it. We know you are. So we're going to be behind you 100%. So those are still lifelong relationships that I have, um, you know, forever. You never know, uh, scout report-wise, who we may come across that they may have played. And so you never want to burn a bridge. You, your, your parents always teach you that growing up. Well, I'm trying to be a living testimony in that. You treat people the way you want to be treated, and you love them up as much as you can until you can't anymore when they're not here. So, yeah, it was tough to leave Toledo uh, just as much as it was tough to leave uh, River Rouge. But uh, those players and those coaches, they cheered me on and say, hey, we're behind you and we want to see you go and grow and make that place special too. You little bit, little have bit. more you want to do as a coach, but what yeah. are you most proud of to this point that as you kind of reflect back on your road here? What am I most proud of? Uh, I'm most the most proud of changing a community of uh, of River Rouge that uh, that didn't have, you know, FBS players or, or guys that was going off to college. We put over 150 kids in different schools around the country, and now three of them, three of those guys just got picked in this past year's NFL draft. I stayed lifelong connected with those guys and tried to help them navigate through different ages and different lifestyles and different things that always threw at you as distractions. And I said, you know what? I'm your first coach. I'll tell you who's the right people to be around you. Because if you pick the right person, then what does this path look like? Because it's not going to be about money. It's going to be about what your path in life is going to be after this. And if not an agent, not a financial advisor can help you with that, then I don't want you a part of it. So once again, it's just me just connecting myself with my players and, and really looking at it as a, a family point of view the same way a dad would look at it. So ultimately, uh, coming here, uh, I want to bring that to my room. Um, I want to bring a, 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 a relationship in the room that has some reciprocity in it of a, a father to son. This is what I want to give to, to these guys. This is what I want to give to Xavier. The same thing that I did at Toledo. This is what I did, this is what I want to give to Quinion Mitchell. This is what I want to give to Chris McDonald because they had never saw it. They had never felt it before. But I thought it's so much authentic, authenticity when you give to a guy and you have nothing left other than just I want the best for you. There's no intentional like pieces to it other than I want the best for you. And that is it. And so if I want the best for you, I'm gonna give you my best. So that was like, when I look at this crazy roller coaster that I've been on, uh, I, you know, I've, I've been blessed to have, you know, uh, the man upstairs just sitting right there is that guard that you put down at Cedar Point right over your lap. I've got, got the good man upstairs to really just keep me grounded and keep me seated all the way through it along with my wife, just helping keep me grounded through it all. Coach, a little bit unusual time to step into a new job with the kids out for summer. Have you been able to talk to any of the players yet and familiarize yourself with the with the position group? Yes, sir. I've been spending a lot of time, you know, uh, just making text messages and phone calls to guys and making sure they know who I am. But I would think that that would be where I'm from. That would be fake if I just called a guy and that was the first and last time he talked to me until he got here. So I told those guys it's going to be a series of calls and texts that we're going to have over these next couple weeks until you guys get back on campus. So when you see me, you, you feel as if it's somebody that you know because we have to hit the ground running now it can't be a they're learning who i am and how i communicate and how energetic i am when they meet me they gotta feel it on the phone calls right they have to see it they gotta have a, a, a very good understanding because i believe that will create a level of success and understanding for them and who they are and what they're trying to do uh being you know being defensive back in our room so yes a lot of phone calls you know even some last night with xavier and some of those guys that just you know uh are, are heartfelt you know those guys want uh, the best for fighting the line of football and so do I so we're able to connect the dots and figure out what their goals and aspirations are in life that has nothing to do with football because then we make football very very easy at that point. Corey I imagine you bring this energy constantly yeah. um, Aaron has a similar personality what's what's been the vibe of you two so far as you work to, to elevate that defensive background? Great dude great dude man uh, uh, just his his level of, of understanding of the positions his level of understanding of what Coach B wants and how he brings it to the table and brings it all together is amazing. And I, I'm drawn to it. I want to learn more from him. Uh, but I want to also be right there side by side with him, helping him lead the charge for us to have one of the better defensive back rooms. And it starts off in the Big Ten. And then from there, in you know the Midwest, and then it goes from there in the dang old country. So I want to create a goal-driven point of view to really help this man 
keep doing what he's doing by building, you know, Division One, uh, you know, Division One players that are really, really good players that become first round draft picks, right? He's got one, I've got one. So we both got a feather in our hat that's a little bit different than most guys, but I think it all comes back to that love language that I talked about. He's willing to speak into their hearts and so am I. Obviously that's a great sell to have the two top drafted corners the last two years, but what was key in developing Quinya? What was the key to that relationship working and, and him developing like he did? Well, just like I said, it's the, it was a, a, a father-son, a family relationship, right? I had to be able to own uh, whatever his uh, difficulties were as a player and help him continuously uh, get better at those difficulties. But a good player doesn't want to hear about his difficulties unless he knows you care about him, right? So I had to really uh, become transparent about, hey, this is what's wrong with your eyes when you have an in-breaking route. We got to fix it this offseason. Or this is what's wrong with your hips when someone gives you a double move. This is what we have to do. So we went through every single step and the number one thing that he asked from me was to coach me hard every day, coach, no matter what. And that's what I did, that's what I gave to him. And he was able to trust me to give him information from all of these different NFL mentors that I have that I'm able to now pour inside of a cup that, was, that wasn't that was full, it was empty. And he was willing to take in everything I was willing to coach him. So had an open heart and an open mind and willing to learn, but he also ran you know, 23 miles per hour on a catapult too. That helps him out a little bit too, you know. You coached against this team a year ago. Yes, sir. Did it all, ever dawn on you, hey, I could come back here and work someday? Was that even in your head error or not? I was just in shock and in awe by how many people was in the stands. It was yeah. beautiful. Like, I'm like, this place is packed. I got to coach my butt off today. So I was just thinking about winning and helping my guys be successful first. But was I a little bit like a dreamer? Uh, the, the, the kid in me, the eight-year-old old football player in me that said, man, I would love to coach or play in a place like this. Yes, sir, no doubt, because this, this, that's rare. You know what I mean? It's rare, you know, to have that many people. They're, they're out there for pregame, you know what I mean? Like, ready to go. And so I was excited, and, and definitely uh, it was something that I knew when, when Coach B, you know, gave me that call. I knew, like, this is something to really fight to get, you know, because they got a very good following, and I want to be a part of that. I want to help that place. So, yeah, I, I was a dreamer a little bit, too, but I was thinking about winning when I was out there, to be honest. Someone who used to be a high school coach, how did that teach you how to build relationships as a recruiter? Well, as a high school coach, you got 160 personnel. I had 160 different personalities as a coach. I had my middle school team uh, that I coached because I didn't want people coming and poaching my middle school players anymore, right? Because other schools would do that in Detroit, Michigan. If they're any good, they'll poach them. So how do you keep a kid? I build a relationship with him when he turns dang going 11, and I keep that relationship going with him. So you learn how to talk about uh, comic books and Marvel and all different stuff, you know, and, and, and video games and all these different, you learn about what makes that kid tick. And I think that is the most important piece for us as coaches. We're so self-driven sometimes at our own ambition that sometimes we, we forget this game is made for the people that love it the most, kids. It's a game, right? And so we take sometimes take that away. And sometimes I wanna just continuously build back into that love and that passion of this is what they're interested in, this is what I'm interested in. Let me show you some techniques and things that'll make this really, really fun to do. So I'll make football fun. Right, football should be exciting. That's where it started, and that's where I wanted to end for every single one of my players. So that's how I did it, just tapping into their interests. But like I said, there's a lot of different personalities. So I had to be a subject matter expertise, a shmi, at like changing what I was interested in a bit in the minute that they were interested in, in things. You know what I mean? So uh, you know, whatever type of neighborhood they were from, trying to merge myself into understanding that neighborhood whatever type of parenting structure they were from, trying to merge myself into that type of parenting structure, whatever type of foods they like, trying to make sure that, hey, when I have the team moms make something, I'm gonna have them make something that you are, you're interested in. So really, once again, being self-invested into what the players are interested in so they can understand, man, that dude really cares about me as a person and he really wants to see me grow as a person. So I ain't just saying, it ain't just lip service, I'm showing it, right? People can talk a whole lot, what are you willing to show? you're going to do. So that's that's what I did as a high school coach. And like I said, from the middle school team, the JV team, to the varsity team, I made sure all things were in line with the standard. Because that's one thing. The line of excellence isn't going to move. So yeah, I'm going to love you up and I'm going to I'm gonna treat you right, but I want to show you this is where I want you to go with this. And you ain't a finished product. So this is these are the things you got to do to build that. You got to have a great character. You got to be a great dang on person. You got to work your butt off in the classroom every single day. And when you don't, I'm going to punish you every single time because you're gonna eat, someday you're gonna hang them cleats up. When you hang them dang on cleats up, 
you're going to use your brain more than you use your body, right? And so I try and hold academics as a very, very high standard, being smart, right? And then lastly, obviously, what you do on the field, your production on the field, not just being out there, but your production, right? Are you a great teammate or are you a traitor? Are we playing dang on 12 on 10 because of you? Because you decided to take your eyes in the backfield and you should have kept your eyes on your guy? Or your, your responsibility is keep your eyes on number two so you know when you gotta, you gotta try and scooch a little bit and try and get up underneath a corner route? Did you see number two or are you looking at number one? You're cheating, get off the field, you're a traitor. So those are certain things that I don't, I don't bend, I don't break off of that stuff. Like I hold them to high standards and I hold them to a level of accountability, but I can do that because they know I love them and I care about them. So a lot of the recruiting areas you mentioned, we've seen Illinois try to already have a footprint or, or try to maybe expand their footprint. And like, what was your, the level of feel for you so like I said it's it's uh, recruiting I'm gonna say it again is relationships and the relationships that you have and the impression that you make on people is going to be a direct reflection on whether you'll be accepting in someone's community or not and so I would rather be the guy that treats every single coach as if he has the goose that laid the golden egg because someday if he does I want to have the opportunity to get him you know what I mean? So for me, looking at those recruiting zones that they're already in, these guys are already doing a fantastic job getting guys from all over the country. My job is just to make sure the, the state that Coach Bielema says that I'm responsible for, I need to shut it down. It needs to be mine. The same way I did as a high school coach. It need, this needs to be mine. And when people see me coming, they need to know, oh, here he comes. But it all comes back to the relationship piece. Why, why would people be so fearful of a man? But I'm a, I'm a man of many spirits. I'm a man of many relationships and many friendships. That's what, that's what they fear the most. Because they, on the other end, other coaches, have decided to walk past a coach and act like he wasn't there because he doesn't have a, a, a nice, sweet logo on. Well, who are you to do that? You're passing judgment on that guy? I'm not that guy. I'm a guy I want to shake hands with every single dude. I want to know who you are, where you're from, what you're about. Why not? We got enough of time on this earth. Why not use it and try and build a relationship in it? So once again, recruiting for me is all about relationships. And I think any state that I go inside of, I'm going to do the best I can to find those old national single wing dudes that I can, hey, tell me about the coach at such and such high school. I need his number. And so that's how it really works. That's how you really get in there. Because now that guy making that call for me is a lot different than me sending a cold text or a cold call. Hey, I want to come in your school. Who are you? So it's all relationships and how you treated people and ultimately people that want to do good things for me because I did good things for them. Did I answer your question? When you made the decision to leave high school, I mean, that had, it was like 13 years, I think, as a head coach or whatever. Yes, sir. That's always a tough one for people because it's like college assistant is a nomadic lifestyle and you might be two years here, three years. What was that decision like? Were you, had you thought of it before or was this the first time you said, I want to move on to college football? I was passionate the entire time by saying to myself, one day I want to be a college football head coach. So I knew there would eventually be some things that would have to change inside of my family structure. So most of all, I try and, I try and be the dang on best husband and best dad that I can be every day. Because I knew someday the lifestyle that we have could change. And if I wasn't uh, involved in the, the things and the sports and the activities that my kids and my wife are involved in, then I would have been a part-time dad. So when we did have to make a change in our course schedule, in our life, it would be tough because they never got the full amount of me. Well, I've been giving them the full amount of me the same way I give to the players, right? And so people wonder like, how do you have enough time? How do you have enough energy to do it? It's, it's, not the t it's just being authentic. And just when I'm there, I'm there. You know, when I'm sitting on the couch, I'm just sitting on the couch with them. I'm not on my phone. I don't care about who's tweeting and texting and all that crap. All I care about is what my son and daughter is watching, what my wife wants to watch, and then the, the four-year-old daughter is calling on my back asking me to make her some dang on ice cream. So just being a great dang on dad, I cannot get fired from that job. I cannot get fired from being, you know, her husband. They did not ask for this lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that became a part of dad's crazy ambition. So to answer that question is really, I give them everything that I got and I'm gonna keep giving them everything I got, even though I may get home sometimes at 11.30 p.m. after practice and after meetings and after watching film and after doing my work in my office. And they'll be okay with that because throughout that day, all the way until 11.30, I'll probably talk to them, they ain't going eight or nine times. I've texted, I've called, hey, what's going on at home? Hey, what you guys doing? Hey, what, you, what we got for dinner? You need, you need me to send any, any food or you need me to do anything? So just being authentic and being there, being present even though I'm not physically present is the most important piece. And my wife is a soldier. She's a soldier. She's awesome. 
I mean, she came and sat at the high school and helped me change that place. I'd be crazy to say I did it all by myself. She helped change the young ladies in that place the same way I changed the young men. And we did that as a team. And with that, she has honored the fact that I was sacrificing so much of this time of getting into that road of becoming a college coach. So she sees, she can see now that jumping into this thing after being a head coach for 13 years and being an assistant coach at the college level for two years, I've never been a GA, I've never been a QC. So I don't have like that, that opportunity for a coach to just call me because I work for this guy and work for that guy and work for this guy, work for that guy. It has to be my production and my dang on merit right now. So she understands the skill it is hot and we got to get moving and do the best we can for the people that we're working for now. It cannot, we cannot wait. And so she gets it and she loves me for it and I honor her and I love her for that too. So it's, it's really like we're different, bro. Like yeah. we're really different in that space where she's not concerned with dad and husband not being home because she knows she's going to hear from me and I'm going to talk to the kids, FaceTime and all that stuff throughout the day too. So the decision to move a couple states away, I mean, Detroit and Toledo aren't far. You yes. know, this is this is a big move for a family. Huge what move. was that conversation like? The conversation was, uh, baby, do you want me to give my all for this? She said, give it your all. You can do it. So, man. Coach, anything different? It's tough, but it was exciting because she she when you get that pat on your back from your wife, bro, like nothing can stop you. You know what I mean? It's like that old school pat on the back from mom or grandma back in the day. Nothing like it. So she told me, go get it. So, yeah, so she's happy, I'm happy. I do the best here. Anything different here, scheme wise or technique wise, that you've had to pick up on? I know Coach Henry likes to play a lot of press man. So. Anything different here? No. So uh, his press man and my press man have a lot of mirrored similarities. Right, and I think uh, he has did a great job where he was had, has been with his defensive backs, uh, you know, at, at Vanderbilt and, and different places that he's been in, and, and had tons of success uh, with the different techniques that he believed in. So uh, my job is to merge my thoughts with his, and also to add just a little bit of my flavor inside that pot of gumbo too, so that it's not too salty, but it's not too bland either. So it's got to be something that the, ultimately is the best for the personnel it's the best for the scheme and what we're doing. So I'm not too uh, self-observant to say, oh yeah, we have to do it my way. No, it's our, it's our way. It's it's a family, it's the fight in the line I way. So that's, that's what I'm all about right now is just trying to get an understanding of the when and the why behind the different techniques that they use, what down and distances they use it. Cause now we're able to teach our players scenario based football. And that's what I think you, you're really trying to do is make sure the players understand what scenario they want to use, what press technique in and the why. Cause once they have that answer, it's not much coaching that we're really doing. We're just managing the behaviors and, the, and making sure their eye discipline is correct deep down the field. Cause they're going to always put us in the right situation. Cause we coached them and they now, uh, they've now taken that and they have ran with it um, in a space where they are now, you know, the best version of themselves every single down. Nobody has to tell them how to do that because they understand the scenario behind it. Does that make sense? Corey, uh, they officially announced Terrence Brooks is joining the program at your position. What, have you been able to look into him, how much you know about him, and what do you think he can bring to the program? Definitely. We'll, we'll been in touch with that big, long, fast, athletic dude and uh, really excited to coach him um, and, and really just – uh, continuously hone down on some of the techniques uh, that, that he uses. And I know, you know, uh, you know, Texas and some of the things that they did is different than some of the things that, uh, you know, the fighting a lot and I did and different than some of the things that we did at Toledo. Uh, but at the end of the day, defensive back play is defensive back play. Trying to take a big, long, strong, fast dude like that and put him in a space where he understands uh, how to uh, curtail his eye discipline to be elite level eye discipline. It's going gonna, it's gonna to change from having a, the PBUs that he had and the receptions that he had. I'm going to try and double it, right? So I want to evolve this man. I don't want to take anything away from him. I want to evolve him and help him become better just the same way uh, that, that the entire defensive staff wants. So uh, I've seen him. I've talked to him. Um, and, and definitely very, very excited to coach him because, you know, he's the, that body type is the nuance in college football, but it's rare when that's that body type and they're that twitchy. So the dude can do a lot of good things. And right now it's just uh, seeing how well he merges into the room, learns to scheme, uh, gets in this place, and really uh, learns how to be a great teammate first, 
right? Because we hear all the transfer stories and how it all works itself out. Well, my job is to make sure, you know, I'm behind him 100%. And yeah, the football stuff is cool, but how do you be a great teammate? How do you make those other 10 dudes on the field trust you unequivocally, you know? So that's what I got to make sure I'm teaching him how to do because these are all young men. They've never been in a business profession where they've got to, I've got to get on this team and learn how to acquiesce with the way that they behave. Well, well, now that's that's my objective to make sure he understands like, hey, bro, this is this is your job. Yeah, you need to maybe go and hang out with these guys a little bit more. Or maybe you need to go and have conversations with these guys a little bit more because you haven't had the, the time to build that equity in the relationship space, in the trust space. So when they communicate with you, it needs to be a little bit more intentional. So I'm excited to teach him that type of stuff. But those are all skills that he's going to be able to take with him after he hangs his cleats up. And that's what I'm all about. What's the response maybe been from the guys with the Text and calls, you know, just the last oh man, yeah, the texts back have been crazy. Like, coach, I'm excited to play for you, man. Let's go. You know, it's that type of deal because you know it seems like every time I talk to somebody, it's like a pregame speech. But I don't know any other way. Like, I'm I am this jacked every single day. I didn't even get to finish my coffee. I just had like two sips. I really want to enjoy it, but you know, I'm just this is who I am. I was the same way as a player. Right, I'm the same way as a coach. I'll never change. Once again, where I'm from, East Six Mile in Detroit, we call that being fake. If you change up, right? So the the conversation with the guys have been very, very receiving, very you know, very exciting. Xavier's talk with me last night was like, Coach, like, man, I want to get better. I know I can do more. You know, it's just different stuff that these guys are saying. Like, they want more from themselves, and they want somebody to continuously help amplify that. That's great. Cause they gonna get it. They gonna get it from me. I'm gonna give them everything I got. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Sure. Perfect. That's all good. Anything yeah. else?